you uh, you had a sort of a ritual with um, Benji and Robbie um, leading into the finals. Uh, what was that? Yeah, the boys would come over to my place uh, where I was living with my, my mum and my sister at the time, and uh, they'd come over to my place. We'd Robbie would cook us dinner. He's a pretty good cook, Robbie, so he'd cook us dinner and. We just hang out and uh, play stick cricket and stuff all night. I don't know how they did it because I slept in my bed, which was comfy. But one was on it. I think Benji was on an air mattress and Robbie was on a fold-out lounge. So um, it, my head would be done in if I didn't have my bed to sleep in. But it just, it just, yeah, it was something that we did that that worked out for us. And uh, yeah, we enjoyed hanging around each other. And I guess it took a bit of the edge off, you know, being with the boys and you know sharing a bit of the the nerves and it just made us feel a bit more comfortable so it worked and uh we yeah we stuck with it through the through the whole final series i remember going out for the game and there was uh something like you know 30,000 dragons fans and 10 to 15,000 tigers fans but you wouldn't have known it from the from the roar we got when we went out for warm up and um, the atmosphere was probably the best i've played in uh, especially in that in that stadium where everything's so close uh we weren't we weren't a chance of winning according to the bookies and that and um, we come out with a lot of confidence off the back of those first two games and uh, Benji scored that first try where he just he went he went through untouched off the back of a scrum and uh, we knew we, I think we knew from that point that that we were a good chance of, of taking it to him and it was it was actually a tough game um, they they never gave up Trent Barrett was always trying something and the type of player that he is you can never relax and feel comf comfortable that we were going to win that game uh, the first one i'm always reminded by benny galea that it was off the back of a, a quick play the ball from him and i was able to scoot out a dummy half um, i think i cut robbie off to get there and scoot a dummy half and, and you know as i said made made use of a quick play the ball and scored next to the post i think it went to video maybe from, from memory and uh yeah got the try so i was lucky i shifted out um, to the centers uh, shane elford on the wing and we shifted the ball in the second half and I was somehow ended up on the wing and on the end of a play and uh, went over with, uh, I think it might have been uh, Ben Hornby coming across in cover to tackle me over line, but it was, it was a pretty pretty easy try for me really just to catch the ball and fall over. I was comfortable playing centre, uh, although in such a big match, you know, it, you kind of, uh, it's, I guess, maybe second guess yourself having to, having to play in an uncomfortable position, but um, I'd done it enough that I know, and, and the, the thing playing dummy half was more. Uh, Robbie was still on when I was on the field. We just sort of, I shared it occasionally with him. I'd go in for a run at a dummy half, and, and he'd get on the back of that and, and, and play off that. So it was just uh, I was given instructions by Sheenzy at the time, and I knew what I had to do and what my role was, so I was ready to do that. I, I can't remember uh, the, the half time speech, but uh, we, we were, you know, we, we scored scored those early tries, and we were fairly comfortable. They scored the their, their, their try. Just before half time, I think it was Wesna Guama. So um, it, kind of, it kind of was against the run of play and, and it might have uh, stopped us a little bit. But also, Paddy was uh, off the field with his injury and um, we were going out at half time and Paddy was shattered in the, um, in the docks room, you know, obviously suffering this injury at a, at a time when you know, we were a chance of making the grand final and, and, and you know, looked as though that he might be out uh, for that. So uh, we all you know, were concerned for Paddy and, and we kind of, I think, I think it was said. You know, we walked past him. Everyone walked past him and said they were sorry. And, and we, I guess, said to ourselves that we'd go out there and do our best to win it for him. So, um, yeah, we, we we went back out there and we, we we grinded away a good win. I thought it wasn't um, wasn't like we ran away with it. It was just it was just a, a good grinding win. I think they put a kick in late, like right near the end, near our goal line. And um, I can't remember if it was Princey or Hodjo that gathered it up and just tossed it over the dead ball line and to soak up a bit more time and. We knew that they weren't a chance to, to run us down at that point and we started feeling that, that sense of um, excitement and relief at the same time that we'd be playing in a grand final the following week and uh, yeah when, when the hoodle went we just we realised that we we're, were going to be playing in, in that in that big game and just um, a really good bunch of guys and, and we got really tight that year and just really happy for each other and, and for ourselves that, that we could do that. In, in terms of timing and, and, and on, on a big stage it's, it's probably um, personally one of the, the, my better performances. I, I definitely think I've played better footy at times but um, it, it just timed, timed it well and, and scoring two tries in, in such an important match uh, definitely uh, it stands out for me. So um, I haven't really, I haven't watched the game. I've seen highlights occasionally and I've never watched the game back from start to finish and um, I guess I've got a good recollection of it myself and that's enough for me to, to sort of look back on.